Hello world, it's Curtis Potter with Boundless Inspiration. Man, it's Christmas Eve. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone in advance. Man, what's that make it like eight days left in 2021? So today I wanted to talk to you about reaping what you sow. And see, I was looking at our garden. Um, you know, obviously it's, it's winter here in Indiana, so the garden is gone and you can still see the outline uh, of the rectangle of where the garden was. Man, it was a massive garden, 125 feet long by 25 feet wide. And see, as I looked at that, that garden, I was just thinking that like, it didn't quite produce what we wanted it to. I mean, we put in the time of tilling up the ground, getting out all the stuff that wasn't supposed to be there. We planted the seeds, we picked the weeds, we watered it. I mean, we put a lot of time and effort into it, but really the garden didn't quite produce what we wanted nor expected it to. And it's like, man, I thought you reap what you sow. And see, I just wanted to tell you that sometimes there's things that you can't control or, you know, sometimes things happen to you. So it's not always what you reap is what you sow. Sometimes there's outside things that come at you. And see, for a lot of my life, I had struggled with when bad things happen to good people. And sometimes I'd even be jealous of the good things that happen to bad people. And see, everything happens for a reason. Now see, we were, we were really like, trying to figure out like why our garden didn't succeed. And we talked to a neighbor who said that the first couple years where they did their garden, it didn't work either. So what we have found out was the soil in our area was bad. It was just, it was not made for good production of crops. There's high amounts of different things that would prevent crops from growing. So what they did was, they um, did some things to enrich the soil where they had planned on planting their garden. And see, it reminded me, because see, back when I was a kid, I grew up on 10 acres, and er um, every other year we would grow corn, and then every other year we would grow soybeans. And the reason behind that was, I don't remember which one, but one of them depleted the soil of the nutrients it needed to grow crops, but the other one, whether it was uh, corn or soybeans, actually didn't need as much of that nutrients to grow and prosper, but it would put back, actually, it would put stuff back into the soil versus taking it out. And see, now even if you um, look at fields around, they'll have stuff growing in the winter, and you're like, man, they just took down the crops. How is that already growing some stuff? And it's, um, it's called winter clover. And winter clover is not only great for the air, but it also, it's really high enriched and stuff that puts back in the soil to make a good crop for next year. So my question to you is, you know, like, yes, we know that things can happen that's not in our control, but like, what are you intentionally doing to enrich your soil? And what does that mean to me? Like, what are you doing on the inside that is affecting your life? Like, are you getting healing from your in your heart from the things that you're holding in, that baggage, maybe of past relationships or past failures? Are you doing things to enrich the soil in your mind? Like reading books, growing, taking ownership, looking in the mirror, just just truly being intentional on growth so that you can evolve and you can pass down some amazing lessons to your offspring and, and any kid or anyone that looks up to you, you're, even if you're not going to have um, kids, are you growing to a point where you can help your other friends grow because of that, that initiative that you took? To improve your soil, your heart, your mind, your body, your spirit, your finances. Man. See, the thing is, is 
there's a lot of ways where we can improve the soil on our relationships, our businesses, our dreams, our goals. So today I just, you know, I say this a lot, control what you can control and give the rest to God. So when things don't quite go your way, it's all right. Give your, you know what, even if you was the reason of the failure of the bad soil, forgive yourself, give yourself grace, mercy. Because if not, like for me, it just bottled up and I was just so pissed at myself for those failures. Like, man, Curtis, you had an opportunity for this business to never work for someone ever again. And it failed. For a lot of that time, I was mad at myself and, you know, I could pick apart like all the decisions I should have done differently, but it's all right. Then I started a new company and, you know, even the remodeling I do, this is just a vehicle to get me to my ultimate goal as a business owner is, is doing motivational speaking and having a, a motivational clothing line, like something that not only gives back to the world, but brings me a fulfillment. So like now I'm not even stuck on the construction company that can really pull me from my ultimate calling and dreams and goals, but something that I'm going to go to work every day and say, man, this is like a vacation. I'm getting paid to speak and help people improve their lives. Like it's not going to be one of those nine to fives. I hit the alarm clock or, you know, even a business that I own where I hit the alarm clock and I'm like, man, I've got to, I've got to go into this business and run this business and babysit these kids. No, the people that I'm going to have on staff, I'm going to intentionally pick to have the same dreams and goals of being in a place that feeds people, enriches people and helps people grow. To where I'm like, man, the team at Boundless Inspiration and Boundless Youth, a bunch of beautiful people making a change to this world. They see a change that they want and then they be that change. That's the soil in the businesses that I'm building. That's the soil in the life that I'm intentionally putting action into creating. See, a dream in your head is just a dream until you write it down, then it's a goal. And then when you put in the steps that it takes to achieve it, that becomes a plan. And a plan backed by action becomes achievable. A dream achieved, a goal achieved. So as we go into these last couple of days of 2021, you know what we've been focusing on? Look yourself in the mirror. Curtis, what can I do different? What was those, those things that happened for me, not to me, to bless me and make 2022 an amazing year where I'm going to knock it out of the park? Like I'm going to keep this, my, my gym routine going. So by this time next year, not only just physically how I look, but my health, man, I was playing with my kids last night, running around the parking lot. For some reason, my son just wanted to run circles around the vehicle before we got in the vehicle. So I'm chasing him. Little dude fell. I said, it's all right, man. He went, he almost started crying because his hands hurt. But I was like, it's all right, buddy. We're tough. It's okay to cry, but it's okay. Your hands are just scraped a little. They're not even bleeding. You're tough. Let's get back up and keep running. And then I picked him up and I was already running with my daughter. We were chasing him. Now I've got two kids in my arms, probably almost a total of 100 pounds, and we're running circles. See, this isn't just about the gym. It was about the fact that I didn't even get winded when I was running while holding 100 pounds. And I remember back to the this time last year, that's what got me on this journey of growth when it came to my gym is because I was wrestling with my kids and I was worn out. And I'm like, man, I'm at this point, I'm 34. I'm, I, I shouldn't be worn out wrestling with two toddlers. See, I had to get uncomfortable enough 
to change because when you're comfortable, you don't change. So you look at yourself and you're like, man, are you fed up with 2021? Are you one of those people who's like, man, I'm just ready for 2022? Well, it's not going to change unless you do. It's going to be that same repeat of a year, same repeat of, of, of relationships, same repeat of failures. It's like going around a mountain just like, like a train in a, um, like my son's train tracks. It's just a circle, and that train just keeps going around and around and around, and it never deviates and goes in another direction unless you create a new path. What are you doing to your soil that's creating a new path, new opportunities, opportunities of growth, opportunities to become the boundless version of yourself, creating that fullness of joy and happiness and love in your life. No more being a a thermometer. It's time to be a thermostat in 2022, and we're all going to work together every single day, just another step closer to being boundless, baby. I love you all. Thank you for, again, all the support and following along. Please like, share, comment, tag somebody in this. If you're like, hey, buddy, let's challenge each other to put some nutrients in our soil, in our mind, in our heart, on our shoulders, that growth to make 2022 an amazing year, the first of a lot of amazing years in our life. I love you all. Again, happy Christmas Eve. You know what the season's about. Hope you have an amazing day. Enjoy time with your family and be boundless. Love you all.